Hi, I'm Callie and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight, I'm making my buttermilk drop biscuits. In my family, known as my grandma's buttermilk drop biscuits. Growing up, I was a little spoiled. Whenever I was at my grandma's house, she made buttermilk drop biscuits every day with breakfast. There was not a canned biscuit in sight. Still to this day, if I want biscuits, I'm making some biscuits. Drop biscuits are a little easier than the biscuits that you make and roll and have to cut. You're just forming them with your hand or a spoon and dropping them onto the pan. There's a couple different ways you can do these. One in a cast iron skillet where they're all close together and they turn out softer all over. One on a metal baking pan where they can be a little crunchier on the sides. So it really depends on how you want them. Everybody in my family likes them different. And everyone in my family also remembers them different how grandma made them. My grandma used to make them with three ingredients. Self-rising flour, Crisco, the shortening, and buttermilk. Well, the Crisco that my grandma used to use, they actually banned over 20 years ago when they banned trans fats. So you can't even make those anymore. They would make big fluffy biscuits that were almost pure white. In the 80s, they actually used to tell you that margarine was healthier than butter. But we know better now and we do better. So mine are going to be flour, buttermilk, and butter. If you want to use just three ingredients, you can use self-rising flour. It works great with self-rising flour. That's how grandma always did it. I don't keep self-rising flour in the house, so I'm going to use all-purpose flour and show you how much salt, baking soda, and baking powder you're going to need. The first thing when baking, I'm going to say repeatedly, is to weigh your ingredients to have more accurate recipes. If you don't have a scale to weigh, simply scoop the flour in and level it off. It will be a lot more accurate. It may not be exact even that way, but it will be a lot more accurate. For this recipe, I've got my scale going already with my sifter, because for biscuits, you're gonna wanna sift them. And I'm gonna get three cups or 360 grams into my flour bowl and just sift it as I go. One level tablespoon of baking powder, always sift it because baking powder will clump together really bad but make sure that you break up the clumps and everything winds up in there so you don't wind up with half of it not in the bowl. And a tablespoon of baking powder is eight grams in this case. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of salt, but I'm using kosher salt, so it's not gonna fit through this sifter. So I'm gonna add this directly to the bowl. One quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda. And I'm gonna wash my hands again. With clean hands, I've taken one US stick of butter, or that's half a cup, or it's 114 grams with the wrapper. So around 110 grams, I may have dropped a cube on the floor. But you're just gonna take this. I, I just took a knife and went long ways a couple of times, long ways this, and then chopped it up. Just like I did if you've seen my flaky pie crust video. And just like the flaky pie crust, you're gonna want this butter very cold and to take a minute and break up the cubes as you put it in so you don't have big clumps. Once the butter is all broken up and in, we're just going to toss it in the flour. And then each little cube you're going to cover in, I'm getting flour everywhere. Each little cube you're going to cover in flour and pinch. If it's covered in flour, it shouldn't stick to your fingers. Just like with flaky pie crust, the smaller the pieces of butter, your biscuits will actually be a little fluffier and not flaky. I grew up eating fluffy biscuits, so I don't mind that if the butter is mixed in. Since my grandma used Crisco, it was already room temperature and it would pretty much mix into the flour and not have big chunks. So it really depends on what kind of biscuits you like and what texture you're going for. If you like it fluffier, you mix it in a little better or get smaller pieces of butter. If you want them really flaky, you would keep big chunks of butter. It's been a couple of minutes. I've pretty much got all of the chunks smashed down, broken up. I don't leave real big pieces, but a few big pieces is okay because I do like them fluffy because that's what I grew up eating was fluffy biscuits, not flaky fell apart biscuits. A key thing for buttermilk biscuits is to get real buttermilk. The ingredients on this buttermilk are cultured milk, salt. Where I live, this is the only brand that I've found that doesn't have a bunch of ingredients on it and is real buttermilk. 
different places I lived have different brands. There's usually one brand in the grocery store that's real buttermilk. And real buttermilk will make all the difference in the world in your baking and even your frying. If you're frying buttermilk chicken, then you can imagine. So if you've been making biscuits and they're not turning out right and you've been using buttermilk with a list of ingredients, try some real buttermilk. This is another thing. My grandma used to just do this until it looked right. And I've tried, I'm going to measure this for you to tell you how much I'm actually using. Since my grandma always did until they look right, even after 20 years, I'm not as good as doing them until they look right as my grandma was because she would make a well and you could only use part of the... Bu I'm going to give you some measurements so we can do this. Because a good recipe, you should be able to duplicate. So I'm going to pour this right in the middle. With all-purpose flour, there can be... A little bit of a variance on how much liquid it takes or it can absorb with all purpose. There's not always a set amount, even if you do measure it properly, which is a big help because if you're not measuring it right and you end up with four cups of flour instead of three cups of flour in this bowl, you're going to need more buttermilk and you're going to be going, but Callie, it didn't work. This isn't enough buttermilk. Weigh your ingredients. So I'm just going to pour this in the middle and mix it around a little. I'm not pressing, I'm just gonna kind of get all of the flour wet with the buttermilk. I'm just going to flip the wet and the dry together without pressing it. You don't want to work biscuits too much because you don't want them, you don't want to form too much gluten and then be hard or stiff. If you can see how that really comes together when you get enough. So now that it's all wet, I'm just going to run it around and press it just a little. I've put, this time it was 300 grams of buttermilk, or about 10 and a half ounces in weight, or about 10 and a half ounces of buttermilk, which I believe is one and a quarter cups buttermilk. Because I believe with milk, one millimeter is one gram just like with water. To give you an idea, if you mix yours and it needs more buttermilk to get wet, you would do a little more buttermilk. If it doesn't need as much, do it slowly. If it doesn't need as much, don't put as much. But when I've weighed it to the 360 grams of flour, use 110 grams of butter, each time it's gone between 280 grams of buttermilk and 300 grams. So within an ounce. I'm not gonna work it too much. I'm just gonna fold it in and get the dry on the wet part. Any parts that are sticky, put them in the dry places, but don't fold too much. I'm gonna clean it off my fingers. So it's kind of wet and sticky in places and kind of drier in others, but that's okay. I'm going to get it off my fingers. 
And my grandma always said, for pretty biscuits, you wash your hands for this next part. I'm going to take a little butter because I'm going to do these two different ways to show you in the skillet and on the pan. I'm just going to butter this skillet. And I'm going to butter this pan, which is hot from being over that vent. And I'm actually going to butter my hands a little. With drop biscuits, you could take a spoon and do it. You could take a measuring cup and get them all even. But I'm going to do like grandma and get in there with my hands. I'm just going to take a piece about the size of the biscuit I want, roll it in my hands loosely. It may fall apart a little, be falling apart a little, that's okay. Press it together gently, don't squish it, don't roll it hard, just form a little ball and into the pan. They're not all the same size, but that's okay. In our family, we like a little variety. When I put them on the sheet pan, I put them almost touching. You can put them all separately if you'd like. Grandma always put them where they would run together, and so that's how my family likes them. Once I get them all on the pan, I just press them down. And really, I press them into each other. Every biscuit would have grandma's handprints in it. <laughs> if you can see, they're not perfect. They're not all the same exact size. It doesn't matter. I think that's part of their charm. I'm starting out with a 450 degree preheated oven. I started preheating this oven before I ever started cutting my butter to make sure that my oven was preheated in time. I'm cooking in a cast iron skillet, which can handle very hot temperatures and a metal baking sheet that can also handle the 450 degree. Metal works better for these biscuits, but make sure whatever you're cooking on can handle the temperature. Depending on what you're cooking on, they'll take a different time. The sheet pan are usually done in about 15 minutes and the cast iron skillet are done in about 20. I'm gonna check them in 15 and see how they look. It's been 15 minutes, so I'm gonna check my biscuits. The, the biscuits on the sheet pan are ready. The biscuits in the cast iron skillet are going to need a few more minutes. Been right at five minutes, so I'm going to check the biscuits in the skillet. Those look great to me. These that have cooled for a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and try. If you can see how fluffy that biscuit is. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, me and my kids will eat them just like this. I may just eat this one just like this. But growing up, my grandma always made mayha jelly. I have two under two, so I haven't been able to make homemade jelly in a few years. But I found some local mayha jelly. And if you've never had mayha jelly... You're missing out. My favorite thing as a kid was eating my grits and eggs at breakfast and then going back later and eating the stripling sausage after it had cooled and jelly on a biscuit as a breakfast dessert. I'm back in grandma's kitchen, y'all. The biscuits on the pan end up a little crispier on the outside. And the biscuits in the skillet wind up a little fluffy around it. Because they all touch, they're all fluffy on the outside instead of the crispy. So depending on what you and your family like, you might want to try the pan or the skillet. But they both make really great biscuits. So Thanksgiving, when I make my cornbread dressing, which is also my grandma's recipe, it's half leftover biscuits. So the next day, however many biscuits you had, that's half of it. You do the cornbread. We have a hard time having any biscuits left over the next day, but that's step one in cornbread dressing in my house. In the meantime, I'm gonna get some eggs fried in the skillet because we're having grits and eggs for dinner with these biscuits. Y'all have a good one.